So today's show is going to be a review of the Shoe Research VTF2 Mark V subwoofer. It's a 12-inch sub. It's a, it's a pretty big subwoofer. But the way this review came about is definitely not the regular course because, well, it started with this. It started with a review I did of the Diptyque uh, DP140 Mark II Planner Magnetic Speakers. These are the best uh, planner magnetics I've ever heard in this room. And I was knocked out. But, you know, when the review was done, they had to go back to their maker. So uh, I decided to pull out my MagnaPan LRS Plus, which are planner magnetic speakers, and see, you know, I knew they weren't going to be the same, obviously, but I just was in that mode to listen to panel speakers. Now, the Diptyque was $17,000 a pair. <laughs> the, plan the LRS Plus is $9.95 a pair. So I really wasn't expecting them to come that close. But the thing was, they were pretty darn good. But yes, they were a bit lacking in bass. It's a little like to say under 50 hertz bass was, you know, non-existent, it's missing in action. So I called up the nice folks at Shoe Research and said, I want to get one of your subs in to use in this context with the LRS Plus but also eventually in this review, other speakers. And they said, sure. And I said, I want to do your least expensive sub, which is this one, the VTF2 Mark V, which is $689. Uh, they only make four subs in the line right now, and the other three are 15-inch subs, and they're not that much more expensive. But I wanted to stick with this one. So that's what we did. And the sub arrives. I hook it up right away. And the blend between the VTF2 Mark V and the LRS Plus was a piece of cake, nothing to it. And I'm listening to this combination and thinking, yeah, it's still not the Diptyque, but it's really, really good. It makes the LRS, the VTF2 Mark V, makes the LRS Plus sound like a bigger speaker. <laughs> and I was, I said, yeah, this, this little plan of mine's gonna work. And yes, of course, I did use the shoe research sub with some other speakers, namely the KEF LS50 Meta and also the Pure Audio Project Duet 15s. Now, the first record I played, to, once I had it dialed in, the first record I played was this 12 inch uh, extended mix of the Rolling Stones doing Miss You. And Bill Wyman's bass line, man, it is so in the pocket, it is so meaty and just propels this song and Charlie Watts drums they are on fire and it just takes over the room and now the LRS plus on its own without the sub it's just a shadow of that sound but the combination of the two oh yeah it was definitely a happening combination the thing that I love about this subwoofer is is well it's a no frills design its purpose is pretty straight ahead make deep, clean bass. That's it. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'll just bring this up right now. There's no remote control. There's no DSP. There's no room correction. <laughs> There's none of those things. It just makes really good bass. And you, when you buy the sub, it's up to you to dial it in to make it sound great. You do it. You, you hook it up, you make it sound good. And believe me, it's not that hard to do. It just takes some time of dialing it in and tweaking it a little here and all that stuff. And by the way, the, the owner's manual, shoes owner's manuals are really good. They give you a lot of useful information about how to dial in the sub and how to place the sub and all that. It's, it's very well covered in the owner's manual. So it's a 12 inch subwoofer that's being driven by a 350 watt class D amplifier that actually can put out 1400 watts on peaks. The rated response in the specifications, and I'll put them up right now, the rated response in the specifications goes down to 16 hertz plus or minus 2 dB. <laughs> that is extraordinary. You know, which leads to you might want to warn your neighbors before you uh, explore the full capabilities of the VTF2 Mark V's deepest bass uh, output. The warranty runs to seven years for the subwoofer and two years for the electronics in the subwoofer. 
So, oh, I just want to mention one other thing about the LRS Plus. I'm using them on these new Magnarizer stands. Uh, Magnarizer is a company that makes stands just for MagnaPan speakers, not for any other brand of speaker. So they really are focused on bringing out the best in MagnaPan sound. And these new LRS Plus stands are exceptionally good. They're steel stands. They're very, very stable, uh, extraordinary, and they sell for $295 a pair. So the setup details of this subwoofer are a little different than average because it has this what they call variable tuning feature. Now on the front baffle of the sub you'll see two ports. They're three inch ports and you can run this sub with both ports open or both ports closed or with one port open and one port closed. And each of those uh, variables changes the sound of the sub. And there's also equalization switches so you can tune uh, with equalization the sound with the ports open and closed in all those combinations. So there's a lot of ways to go there. I'm not going to get into all of it. I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the review of the sound of with the, let the ports open or closed. But I will tell you right up front that I use the sub almost exclusively with both ports closed. Hey, let's take a look at the back panel to check out the connection and setup features. Going from left to right, on the left there, you'll see the speaker level input, and that'll come in handy if your preamplifier or integrated amplifier doesn't have subwoofer outputs or extra set of pre-outs. In that case, you will use, if it does, then you can use the left-right RCA line level inputs. Then there's the subwoofer volume control, and then next to that is the 0180 phase switch. Next is the EQ operating mode switch. Then the Q control, and <laughs> I wish I could explain that quickly, but I can't, so that's all covered in the owner's manual. Then the crossover control that runs from 30 to 90 hertz. It's a 24 dB per octave slope. And then there's the crossover bypass switch that you would want to use if you're using it with a receiver or something that has built-in bass management. And then last but not least is the power standby switch. Now the cabinet, by the way, is made out of three-quarter inch MDF with significant bracing. And oh, by the way, there's a cloth grill, very nicely done, in a heavy-duty frame. And instead of using plastic pins to hold the frame in, there is these solid metal it's like plugs that definitely are not going to break. So I've used Anna von Halswoof's uh, album before, the CD before, because it's beautiful music. She plays a large organ, and I got to say, it fully exercised the VTF2 Mark V's capabilities. <laughs> no doubt about it. And there's a real pulse to this music. And, you know, turning off this up and just listening to the LRS Plus on their own, it was a kind of a letdown. Now, they do make some bass. As a matter of fact, I mostly listen to LRS Plus without any subwoofers, and I'm perfectly happy. But if you're the kind of person that really wants a more, let's say, visceral experience and want the MagnaPan detail and openness and soundstage and all that, yeah, adding a sub, especially one as capable as this one, is a really good idea. So I next wanted to play a real organ uh, classical recording piece, this one of Bach music on the Telarc label, known for their organ recordings, by the way. And this one is a doozy. And the way, the thing that's really startling about this recording is not just that the bass goes deep, it's how clear the bass is, how airy the bass is, that each note on these large organs comes through as a distinct entity. There's no blurring, there's no muddiness, there's no woofy things going on. It's just tight, in control bass. So one of the other benefits of using a subwoofer, by the way, isn't just bass, that's obvious, right? But you also get, well, for lack of a better way of putting it, sound stage expansion. Your stereo speaker sound stage seems bigger more spacious, more depth with a subwoofer engaged. I know it's counterintuitive, but I've heard that with every good subwoofer. And certainly this one was doing it with this Bach organ CD. It was just, you know, the, the soundstage was just that much more immersive 
with the VTF2 doing its thing. So to continue, I want to mix it up and try my Pure Audio Project Duet 15 speakers with the VTF2 Mark V. Now, mind you, <laughs> the Pure Audio Projects have 15 inch woofers, two of them, like one per channel, right? You think, why would I need to add a subwoofer? What benefit could that possibly deliver? And the answer is, well, more deep bass. It's really interesting. I mean, the woofers in the Pure Audio Project aren't tuned, let's use that word, they're not tuned for deep bass extension. They're tuned to sound well as in a full range speaker. So yes, adding the, the VTF Mark II uh, did that thing of expanding the sound stage, certainly with the organ piece going way deeper than the Pure Audio Projects can do on their own. So that came, well, I wouldn't say as a surprise because I kind of knew it was going to go that way, but it was still like, it just makes the speakers sound like, well, bigger, <laughs> more powerful speakers. Oh, one thing I should have mentioned earlier about using um, the sub with the LRS. It's not going to make the LRS a more dynamic speaker. The, the LRS's limitations in terms of dynamic swings and power delivery aren't going to get any better when you add a sub. What you're going to get is more bass and more, obviously more bass extension and all that, but it's not going to suddenly be a rock and roll animal because you're using a subwoofer. If that's what you're looking for, then adding a sub to the LRS is probably not going to be satisfying. At this point, sticking with the Pure Audio Project speakers, I decided to experiment with using the VTF Mark II with the ports open. So I removed both plugs and listened to it open. And yeah, the sound is definitely different. It's thicker, it's more punchy, it just has more slam to it and weight and thickness. Maybe that's the best word, thicker. It sounded thicker and woofier, you know. But some of the definition that this sub is capable of wasn't there anymore. Now, of course, there's an in-between position, literally, where you can have one port open and one port closed and get some of both. But for my taste, and it's just my taste, I liked running it with both uh, ports sealed. And that was the fastest, clearest bass that I got from the VTF Mark II. At this point, I popped in the Kef LS50 Meta stand mount speakers and listened to Rod Stewart's first solo album. And the very first track on the record is Street Fighting Man, the, the Stone song. And he does it in his own way, of course, but it's it has something that I really like. I kind of like this arrangement even more than the Rolling Stones arrangement. And it's noteworthy that Ron Wood, who would later be the guitarist for the Rolling Stones, is on this record playing slide guitar and also bass guitar. And just the drums and the energy and the drama of Street Fighting Man, the way Rod Stewart does it on his first record, is really good. And adding the sub in terms of the drama and the excitement of the song definitely was doing its bit to help the LS50s. But again, you know, the LS50s are certainly more full range than the LRS Plus. And I, I always enjoy listening to the LS50 metas without a sub. But adding the sub, sure, absolutely. Adding that bottom end made them uh, loom larger in my room, definitely. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, so Steve, what do you really think? What do you really think of the Shoe Research VTF2 Mark V subwoofer. Well, <laughs> let me put it this way. For, for $689, I literally cannot imagine anything else that could make this big of a change to the sound of your system. And it's not just adding more bass. As I just said, the sound stage, you'd be surprised how different sound stages work when there's a subwoofer in the system, a, a good, competent, well blended with your speaker's subwoofer. And this one, because of the variable tuning options, it's easier than most to get a really seamless blend with your speakers, with your satellite speakers, and something that works to your taste. So yeah, it's, uh, it's highly, highly recommended. And, and you know what else I'm recommending? Let's do this other thing called the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the day. These pictures were sent in by Alan. He's a neighbor. He's actually run into me a few times on the street. So thank you, Alan. His turntable 
is a Riga Planer 6 with an Ania moving coil cartridge. There's a power supply for the turntable, I, you know, I added on. It's the Neo PSU Mark II. Integrated amp is a Wilsonton R300, that's a 300B amplifier. And he's going to start to do some tube rolling this year. Phono preamp is a Darlington Labs MP7. And then there's a Darlington Labs SU7, that's the step-up transformer, I assume. And the speakers, oh yeah, we know those speakers. Those are Zoo Dirty Weekend 6 with the Superfly Performance Package version. Anyway. Thank you, Alan. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac, and I do want to thank you for sticking around and watching this far into the video. And uh, I'm working really hard in 2024 to make the best videos I've ever made. I'm <laughs> this is my heart and soul goes into each of these things. And well, if you would enjoy the reviews and you enjoy my chats with Herb Reichert and my interviews and my thought pieces, I'd like you to consider contributing to my Patreon. The address is on the screen right now. You can join for a month or two, or you can join and stick around for years. And in the top two tiers, you and I will have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. So all the information about the Patreon is on the site. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. Hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.